again, thank you so much for sitting down um, and taking the time to do this. You obviously have been passionate about this issue, so I want to ask you, what do you want abortion policy to be in this country, and what role do you think men should play in advocating for abortion rights? Look, we, we, ha we have to get back to where we were. I mean, we had a right that was literally ripped from the people of this country, not just women. Um, I was talking earlier at the event. I've, I've been a lawyer for a long time. I teach law. Um, and everything we've learned about constitutional law is moving forward. And taking the government out of your bedroom, out of your medicine closet, and out of your doctor's office, and just having these rights and these freedoms. And the Dobbs decision literally sent us back, if you look at the situation in Arizona, a century and a half. And it's completely unacceptable. And what has happened? It is a medical health care crisis caused by, by the Dobbs decision. And millions of Americans are suffering. We're here in Georgia. Today is the five-year anniversary uh, when the governor signed a six-week ban. You barely know, it, probably don't know you're pregnant at six weeks, so it's in effect a full-out ban. You saw what just happened in Florida. You saw what happened in Arizona. And by the way, that reverts to a ban as well. So this is what's happening all over the country, and it's not going to stop there. So we need to just basically put the brakes on what's happening. We know this is a non-partisan issue because every time this issue has been on the ballot over the last couple of years, it, the numbers are overwhelming, 70, 80 percent in favor of freedom. And so that's why I am uh, working so hard on this issue. My wife, the vice president, has been leading on this issue. The president, the entire administration is pushing uh, to, to remediate this. But the best way we can do this is people need to get out and vote because this is really on the ballot. For men in particular who are wondering, what can I do and whether or not I should even have a role in this, what's your, I should, what's your message for men who are wondering, what should my role be here? And is this really even an issue that I should be concerned about? Yeah, because it, it, it impacts families. It impacts decisions on whether you're going to have a family or not. Or when you say you've already had a, a child or two and you're thinking about having another one. Or we've seen these stories, these horrific stories, you know, the woman in Texas and her husband um, trying to have a baby. And she had a problematic pregnancy and almost died of sepsis. And so then they're out now telling their story. So when it becomes personal, when it's, that story looks like something you're going through, that's why it's an issue for everyone. Now this is something that we're talking about. I'm talking about this with my other dad friends. I'm talking about it with my son. And it's not just because I also have a daughter. I have a son. And we talk about it, about how this is going to impact him and, and how he's going to start a family or not. And then we talked at length about freedom. Because even if this isn't your issue, but it should be, because, again, women should not be treated less than, where does it end? Because if you look at the concurring opinion in Dobbs, um, it's really what's, what are we coming after next? So is it contraception? Is it right to, to marry who you want to marry, love who you want to love, read what you want to read? Uh, and, and just having the government be, be back in your lives, that, that's, that's happening. So everyone needs to care about that. What's your message to the many male lawmakers that we've seen be part of restricting abortion rights? Stop it. Listen to the people in this country. See what's going on. Listen to doctors. Listen to nurses. Uh, listen to men and women who are suffering because of those actions. Just listen and do the right thing. And in Texas, for the first time, we're seeing a man threaten legal action against a woman who had an out-of-state abortion. How concerned are you that men might be playing a role in intimidating women who are getting out-of-state abortions or who want to get abortions? It's all the same issue. It's all about taking free freedom away and trying to control how other people live in the year 2024. This is, this is the way it used to be. This is what everyone has fought for. This is what the long line of Supreme Court decisions were about granting more and more freedom and taking the government out of it. So it's, it's all the same answer. Just stop it. Stop it. We need to move forward and we need to restore our freedoms and end this, this crisis, this medical crisis that's happening because of those, 
these uh, regulations and rules. I also want to ask you, you've been doing a lot of work on anti-Semitism, of course, as a history-making Jewish American yourself. Um, how concerned are you about anti-Semitism in America on college campuses? And also, what do you say to people who think that there might be some who are conflating um, criticism of Israel with being anti-Semitic? Yeah, this, this is work that I started doing uh, when Biden and Harris uh, took office. Um, I was honored uh, to participate in the first national strategy to combat anti-Semitism, uh, which uh, was released uh, before October 7th in May of 2023. Uh, the president said it today in his, in his remarks. There is a, um, it's a crisis of anti-Semitism which has erupted in this country since October 7th. So let's be clear, this is a crisis. Uh, it has to, we have to stop it. And I was so, uh, I just loved what the president was talking about today, the statement Vice President uh, put out yesterday, uh, just calling attention to um, that, yes, we are in favor of the First Amendment and the right to protest. But when that crosses over into threats of violence, calling for the genocide of Jews, and you talking about a, a just a college student who might just happen to be Jewish, and, and, and kind of conflating what's happening, what they might be protesting against with this school person, school kid who had nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. And it's just wrong. These kids just want to go to class. They just want to finish out the semester safely um, and without being screamed at with the most horrific language. I met with college students yesterday at the White House and heard some of their stories. And, you know, it, it's, it's tough to hear. So we've just got to stop. We've got to, you know, not conflate these two issues. And I guess I want to go back to the idea of when critics say there is some conflating of people who are critical of Israel and people who are being anti-Semitic, what do you say to that pushback? Look, it, it's okay. It is okay to exercise your right of free speech, and it is okay for valid criticism of policies of, of Israel that you don't agree with. That, that's okay to, to do that. But when it crosses over into what we've seen, you know, someone holding up a sign that says, pointing at Jewish students, Hamas, that's your next victim. That is just outrageous. It's wrong. It's anti-Semitic, and it must stop. Uh, Senator Bernie Sanders said that he's worried that the protests that we've seen, the pro-Palestinian protests that we've seen at college campuses, that that might be President Biden's Vietnam. Do you share in that concern? Look, you, you've got to you got to be for something and say the right things on when it must be said. And so when the president spoke up today um, about the scourge of anti-Semitism, that's the right thing to do. And he said it so um, clearly and passionately, and it, it had to be said. And some things, um, you just have to do the right thing. And when you have people being blatantly anti-Semitic, calling for genocide, um, pointing at students, saying, Hamas, that's your next victim, um, it's got to be called out. And we've got to protect these students. We've got to make sure they're safe to be at school, at temples and houses of worship. And again, I've been fighting against hate in general. So I'd say the same thing about Islamophobia. I'll say the same thing about Asian hate, LGBTQ, everything. Anytime there's hate like that, we've got to all come together and push back on it. It's bad for our democracy. It's just bad for our country. What do you say to people who think the Biden administration, your wife, of course, the vice president and the president, aren't doing enough to, to prevent civilian deaths in Gaza? Look, I know they are working around the clock. Just as we speak, there are discussions being held. Um, they are doing everything they can to bring this conflict uh, to, to an end and also return those hostages who have been there way too long. And what kind of conversations are you having with your children as a father when you talk about not only abortion rights, but also the tumultuous times that we're living in and anti-Semitism? If you could just talk a bit about what you're telling your children in this moment. Well, they're adults, so, you know, we're having conversations that are probably going on in, in houses and in millions of houses all around the country. Uh, we're trying to have honest conversations about what's important to them as young people. So I mentioned my son who just got married. Uh, this issue of reproductive freedom is very important to him. Uh, the issue of our environment is very important 
to the kids, this issue of gun violence, which must be stopped, very important, this issue of, of rights. So these are the conversations that I have with, with my kids who are in their 20s, and these are the same issues, uh, same concerns that people their age and, and younger have. And again, that's the work that President Biden and Vice President Harris are doing, and that it's, it's being very responsive to the issues that are so important to younger people. And as you're doing this, especially when I think about, as you're rallying men around the issue of, of reproductive rights, how are you going to measure um, your success, given that so much of this abortion fight is going to be on the ballot and in courts? That's why I'm working so hard. We've got 182 days between now and the election. So myself, President, Vice President, First Lady, we are literally crisscrossing this country, uh, spreading our message of that this is a binary election. You've got the former president on one side who is celebrating the overturn of Roe v. Wade, saying women must be punished, calling um, immigrants, uh, you know, poisoning the blood of our country, and all the, the, the horrible things, uh, the dereliction of duty during COVID, all these things. And then on the other side, you've got Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, who are on the right side of each and every one of these issues. And that's why I'm going to do nothing but uh, work as hard as I can and make sure that they get reelected. So issues like Dobbs, um, we can hope to remediate. Mm -hmm. um, as you think about sort of the role of men in, in pushing for abortion access, um, is there anything more you would say to them who are, are again wondering, is this really the issue that I should be on? It's uh, a, one, it's the right thing to do because it's not fair. This is a issue of fairness to women. Again, they are not being treated they're being treated as less than. It's just wrong. Women are dying. Um, it's affecting men's ability to plan uh, their lives. And it's also an issue of what's next. What, what other freedoms are at risk? And these freedoms are, are affect all Americans, not just women. So it's something that we, we all need to push against. And every time this has been on the ballot, I said this before, every time it's been on the ballot, overwhelmingly, um, we're getting support uh, for freedom, mm -hmm. for reproductive freedom. And um, like, uh, you know, we are, this administration is again on the right side of so many things. And again, in Georgia, we heard the news today that the former lieutenant governor is supporting, and he's Republican, Jeff Duncan, he's supporting Biden Harris. Do you plan to go to any college campuses either to talk about anti Semitism or to talk about abortion rights? Uh, yeah, definitely. I've been doing that. I've been to many college campuses talking about anti-Semitism and abortion rights. I've been calling in to college campuses over the last several weeks, and I'm going to continue uh, to, to, to share my voice and, and be there for people and listen and, and give them support. Absolutely. I'm done with my questions. Is there anything that you would want to share as a man who's doing the work on this? Just that, again, this is an issue for all Americans. This is an issue about our fundamental freedom. This is an issue about families, and this is an issue that we cannot let up on because, again, what are they coming for next? And that is one of the many reasons to keep Joe Biden and Kamala Harris in office. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.